Shattered Refuge. Yeah, so the mainland can't be that, like, they, they want to go to the Jade Kingdom, which is north. Well, yeah, they, they basically want to sail over to here. and then Yeah, take Black Dog wants to go. Black Dog wants to go here. Here. Which he certainly can do. Okay. Like, in the, in the opposite direction of danger. <laughs> Plus, he needs to try out his new sword. <laughs> You should take those who wish safety to, to the safe lands. People of the Jade Kingdom hide behind their walls. They have an emperor there, I think. Yes, they, they, the, the Jade Emperor. He is supposed to be most wise and humble and um, benevolent. Then go there. Find someone to bring me to the mainland of the Iron Kingdoms. We will. He, he will give a gauntlet to the guy who came to pick him up. Probably the same dude. Because it's the same guy. It's the... <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. He's trying to get. He's basically getting the magic set right now. <laughs> okay. Does he, does he notice the massive plank that <laughs> that is Black Dog Sword? He's. Looking at it in, in an interesting fashion, he's not. He doesn't think it's a sword. Okay. Um, ceremonial. No. Structural. The metal of, the metal of my temple. Forged in the blood. Of the pyre of the priests and monks that live there. It is my vengeance. He holds it out. Two hands. My sword is my temple. Don't drop it, it'll sink really fast. <laughs> it looks like I just read <laughs> He thinks really hard, and um, the reason why Black Dog doesn't have 42 hit points as opposed to 39 hit points is that there is a favored uh, trait of Fighter, uh, where you gain a plus one to your CMD versus at per level versus two Just, attack forms. One of them is going to be disarm. disarm. <laughs> the other one's grapple. He doesn't like to be grabbed because he wants to use his sword. I want to so, use my sword. My yeah, 20th level, sword. a plus 20 CMD against disarm, plus 20 CMD against it's grapple. Very good. Will be, very good. Will be good. Yeah. <clears throat> Next thing up is to figure out a way to sheath it. Which What's that? kind of we'll figure out a way to sheath it. I think that's more of a mechanical yeah. thing. In game, it's just, yeah, you. I, I think it's more like two. Um, metal like prongs that that are on his backpack and enough space for him to kind of like where the whole thing the whole thing tilts and yeah tilts and well there's there's a funny or aspect twi or of twist or twists and come out you know that sort of thing the, the one way to do it is where it's like hooked and it sort of is only on one side so drawing it you only pull it up like an inch and then yeah. you and then you you basically reef it off your shoulder otherwise it's like your length of your arm doesn't go long enough yeah, there's got to be some twisting. <laughs> there needs to be a twist motion. And then, to it, it, and exactly. then it comes out, yeah. yeah. Yeah, One of the prongs is a little thingy on it. <laughs> okay. uh, cool. All right. Um, okay, so you're going west to the Warring Iron Kingdoms. Um, what we're going to do... Yep. Here's our options. We can call here for tonight or we could get like an hour into Lihita. so i'm kind of leaning towards calling it for tonight what time is it it's 11 30 so we, we can go for another hour hour and a half with lee okay let's do it <laughs> i need i need to i need to bio before we do that, I, I need a bio i okay. need a bio as well go back mark's like Lihita. <laughs> Yeah, Lee's Lee's backstory I think is much happier. I'm not sure. 
<laughs> I don't know who went out of his plan. Sure. <clears throat> Well, his brother and sister are missing. Hopefully they were taken captive. And the white wolf is gonna get a huge greatsword in the face. Right, no, he's, he's, he's a much more jolly person than Black Dog. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Oh, no, it's my turn. Someone needs to be on stream. <laughs> on stream. Pooping is for weak DMs. We hit off. Pooping is for weak players. <laughs> Pooping is for the week. <laughs> Remember, kids, winners don't poop. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. I didn't. Color spray is a good, uh, good spell for uh, a bunch of third level. <laughs> uh, everybody just took it, blast to the face, and. Stunned sucks. <laughs> Stunned and blind for round sucks. Uh, I don't... I think it's against Twitch's TOS to poop yourself on stream. I don't know for sure, and I don't plan to, to <laughs> figure it out. Uh yeah, now we're going to go to Mr. Hida. <laughs> Just don't mention it. It'll be really obvious when my wife comes down with the what the hell's that smell. <laughs> Is there a lingering dookie smell? <laughs> Color spray is OP at low levels. And then uh, we're playing with a, a change to magic where you have one save DC. So when you have a caster who's of a moderate level and they cast that spell at you, it's automatically heightened to their, their maximum spell, right? So it's, it's, it's a big problem. It is a big problem. Yeah, things would have went a little bit differently. It makes spellcasters scary again? Yeah, we need to make spellcasters scary again. Well, third level fighter <laughs> with a third wisdom is like... Oh, well, it's, it's third level fighter, third level brawler fighter, third level monk, and a third level monk rolled a seven on their on their will save. Yep. <clears throat> Everybody was clustered together. And the person was like, I could leave or I could do this one thing before I leave. And it's like, oh... Well, that worked even better than... Uh, and nobody's going to punch me. <laughs> Push everybody off the mountain. I, I knew. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, even if she's just an alchemist, she's still the most dangerous thing on the... Oh. Aside from brother figure. Still the most... Those are the two most dangerous things on that platform. Not not yes. knowing what the pirate could do or whatever. Yeah. Um, 100%. Yeah. You, you chose correctly. We, we just don't have the levels to, like... Face tanks Auto this do stuff. things, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Black Dog's backstory is so metal. Metal is fuck. <sighs> We're gonna go to another temple. This one's also gonna be doomy and gloomy. Oh, All right. No. Then. <laughs> shattered refuge. No shattered refuge. We go to the. 
House of the Celestial Comet. We'll grab Lee Heater there. Mark's gonna be setting fire to this one too. Show up, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Not all the backstories have to be tragic, horrible. <laughs> Like, uh, you know. Oh, this is a nice looking place. <clears throat> Lee Hida, you've spent your life in this village called uh, Pijo. It's one of the, like, famous for its, its brewing. It's famous for its, like, competitions and it's named after it's basically it's industry PGO being like alcohol um, it is a boisterous place with boisterous people Lee Hida in his youth was always bigger than everyone in personality and in spirit just like a joyous figure As a rowdy kid, you had some issues, particularly around the age of becoming a man. You started getting into some fights, and the fights are, you know, when you're 11 and a 16-year-old picks a fight with you, Normally, the 11-year-old is the one not getting in trouble for that fight. But when you're a half-giant and you're bigger than the 16-year-old... Oh, not just a half-giant. He's a half-giant ogrekin. So one of his levels oh. is actually, like, near relative ogre blood. <laughs> so mm -hmm. he's he's big. His, his standing strength is 26. Oh, he is a, he is a big fella. 7, 10, 565 pounds. He's a very big fella. <laughs> you were... So as a... Um, as a kid who got bullied for being the big dumb ogre, um, how would you have responded? First, he's not dumb. Uh, in 14, wisdom 16. However, his charisma is 8, and that's because his voice is so low, sometimes it's hard for people to understand what he's saying. And I do have a voice for him. <laughs> It's going to be hard for you to understand what he's saying. <laughs> well, so how does he respond to the local schoolboys calling him the big dumb ogre? Because they don't care if he's in 14. <laughs> they care that he's a big dumb ogre. <laughs> um, schoolboys, he will try to outsmart them. And then if that doesn't work, uh, he's he was really fond of throwing things. So it'll be a nice nice rock to their, to their beans. Okay. Uh, give me your your conniving roll, or whatever skill you're using to trick them. Conniving. How would you trick them? It wouldn't be bluff. <laughs> it wouldn't be diplomacy. It wouldn't be intimidate. It wouldn't be the normal ones. So it would be uh, setting snares for them um okay so survival yeah that 20 31 <laughs> like rabbits oversized rabbit snares to like trip them up and get them late to school and uh, okay uh setting traps where they play <laughs> give me your stealth check oh no no <laughs> <laughs> I have a rank in this, but he has an ogre trait that makes him considered one line, one size category larger for for stealth. Uh, he's very big. Uh, t Eleven for stealth. Eleven. Okay, so you were caught doing. <laughs> you were caught trapping the local schoolboys. <laughs> you developed a reputation where people were like. Watch out, he hunts people. He's going to eat you. Ogres eat people. Like, this is like the stories that got told. No. Nah. <laughs> second. No, no. I don't eat people. Just impossibly low. I'll go as low as I can go. 
<laughs> if you switch microphones, it might not pick up. <laughs> yeah. I don't need people. Yeah, ogres eat people, and now you're trapping us to eat us. The ogres are attacking. The kids are, you know, the kids are running, screaming, causing a muck. <laughs> Your uncle? He, he he travels a lot. He's an adventurous sort. His name is Lee Bodhi. He is someone you look up to. He would be the cool uncle, okay. if that makes sense. Well, I recognize that comment. I resemble that comment <laughs> <laughs> in real life. Um. Uh, he has you know tattoos describing his adventures. He carries a, a supply basically he has enough a party on his back at all times you know he's a member of this house of the celestial comet he is one of their their master brewers and an acolyte who spreads the word oh Lee Hida. you've grown <laughs> you might rival my stature when you grow old in both directions <laughs> uh, one cannot say they are true ogre kin if they only grow tall and not wide <laughs> as he sh shakes his his girthy belly uh that he he wears proudly um he actually has a girdle that uh like the girdle on his dress is pulling his belly like up and out as opposed to like making him look thinner it's trying to yep. make him look more heavy on top <laughs> Uh, Lehita's barrel that he carries, similar to his uncle, is empty. the The top is empty because Lee likes to carry sticks and things to throw in it. You know, your uncle's is is usually full of of liquor or alcohol or something. He's typically carrying fluids, although he has a massive, um, oversized pole arm that he carries. It looks like a fishing hook or a fishing tool. <laughs> Lee will sit down in anticipation for drink. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, you're you're given you're you're given basically alcohol, uh, not strong alcohol, but at a, a relatively young age. He he drinks the beer, taking a big swill at first and then slows down to sipping. You... His uncle's here. Otherwise, he'd be. He'd... At this point in time, pre monkly he'd, uh, he'd be getting smashed. <laughs> mm. Your... How do you like your schooling studies? Uh, I like the studying part. Um, I'm good with numbers and my elements. Your mother tells me you're good with traps as well. <laughs> There's a lot of jiggling going on. <laughs> All I did was make them bigger. <laughs> it's not that hard. You make little traps for the rabbit. You know where they're going to step. Mm. <laughs> In many ways, rabbits are smarter than people. Rabbits don't fall. Rab rabbits react quickly to change. And mm. People get complacent. I don't like how they make the noise when they... I don't like how they cry. The people are the rabbits. <laughs> he, he, he begins laughing and takes a swig. You should... I yep. think you're ready to be taken on at the house of the celestial comet. Oh. They've got good food there. Good drink, too. Good drink. Best drink. There you will get a proper step up in the world. Doorway into a whole new way of viewing things. Nothing so childish as hmm, what planet goes where, etc., etc. Will they teach me about the Shikigami spirits? They will teach you about the spirits that look over us. They will teach you about how to brew, how to distill, about the 
holy ingredients that make up libation. <laughs> hey, Lee's looking forward to this. He, he doesn't necessarily like the constant torment and battling with the human students. Especially now that he's getting into trouble for beating them up. <laughs> He'd much rather spend time with his uncle than hang out with you, you will humans. Get your own stories. Tales that you can cast upon your flesh when you are ready. Mm. It is the ogre way. He looks at his arms. My arms are very bare. There's room to grow, room for stories. So many stories. <laughs> Did I ever tell you the tale of the seven ambrosias? Drinks of the gods cast amongst the peoples. Okay, he, he sits and wants to know more. Oh, go ahead and tell me, Uncle. There were seven drinks of the gods made manifest upon the land. These seven beverages were so potent that they could bend the mind of a mortal man great and powerful blessings are bestowed upon any of those who could craft or imbibe such food. Did I have a formula book? I... The formulas are very complex. Mm. A mind cannot keep it all in one place. The beauty of it drives you mad. No, you need the special formula for each of the libations, each of the ambrosias. It is one of the things that we seek when we bring our brews across the lands. We keep our eyes out for clues, for stories. We know the orcs have one of the brews. The elves way up north have another. And the dwarves have at least two. The Jade Emperor has one. That is the one that I seek currently. The other two... We think those... The ring men might have might have it, but it is uncertain. It might have left this world. The seventh I don't know. He's refilling his he's refilling his mug. Oh, there are other reaches out there. Great ones, giants, dragons, all sorts of things. All sorts of things I hear the dwarves speak about. Why are we all here at the restaurant, then, if we, if those formulas are out there? Hmm? Well, we, we need resources, and we need to fulfill the will of the people and the gods. Mm -hmm. If everyone runs around, then there's no home to come to. My brother me, raised a family, the nephew, and I go and explore. If we both explore, there'd be no family, no nephew, and no anything else. I suppose that makes sense. Some people's feet are meant for, well, sitting. And others are meant for walking. Well, what are we waiting for? Well, I'm waiting for some snacks, actually. <laughs> He's calling, calling, calling someone over to, to bring some bread, some bread and some cheese. <laughs> Lee smiles at this. 
he looks like a person who's perpetually snackish. <laughs> when you're ready, you need to decide. Do you stay in the monastery or do you stretch your legs? Come. There are many, many things. Great stories ahead. <laughs> And who knows, maybe you'll be the first one to find all seven Ambrosius. They don't even know what happens when you bring them all together. Oh. Some say it'll undo everything, their naysayers. Some say it will do everything. Or it'll get you really drunk. <laughs> Gloriously drunk. <laughs> Drunk like a god. <laughs> Ambrosias are drinks of the gods. Their formulas slipped upon the land. Rolling around in the sky when it thunders. They drink too much. They forgot them. <laughs> mm. Mm. He looks at his own drink. There's a point there, but he's young. He finishes it and asks for some more. Okay. Your uncle teaches you... Let's see. Let's just check your classes right now. Monk Far Strike 1, Barbarian Hurler 1, Ogrekin 1. And then the Gestalt is Alchemy, Vivisection is Churgeon. So a healer that can sneak attack. All right. Uh, your uncle teaches you a trick involving your alchemy. Cool. Um, you can basically create traps that incorporate alchemical items or like extracts or infusions that could affect a creature. Oh, cool. Uh, it's like the the minor there's a there's a class that has like the ability to make like traps that explode. It's like a, a slightly different version of that. It's less it's more utility than it is direct combat. So with alchemical items or potions. Yeah. Okay. That's neat. <clears throat> uh he also then basically shows you how to do this by alter selfing one of the bullies into a halfling <laughs> through a trap <laughs> you, you also you used invisibility <laughs> extracts to do it in a way where you didn't get seen and you were very vehemently told not to tell your mother <laughs> <laughs> that's funny all right um Lihita, as you grew, your time at the temple was what people would describe as good. Uh, we're going to go to the Golden Lantern Hall. Loaded. Loaded. <clears throat> okay, this, this is the, the restaurant that, or, or brew house. That is underneath the monastery. Um, within the monastery, you've learned about brewing. You've learned about distilling. You've learned about um, uh, gods and domains and spirits. Spirits, both spirits, spiritual spirits, as well as alcohol spirits. Um, and how well did you take to your lessons? I'm just trying to go here. Uh... One rank in brewing, max ranks in craft alchemy. They taught you a bunch of stuff that went in one year about the other. You really cared about three, making the books. three ranks in healing. So three ranks in healing. They did yeah. teach you how to heal. You you did take well to to mending things. Uh, give me a profession brewer check. Sure, alchemy instead and brewer to back it up. Or <laughs> yes, uh, yes uh, add two. Okay. Um, Mark's been. I I missed our Mark's chats. They're funny. Oh, ten. <laughs> We still haven't mastered beer. Oh, that should be plus, uh, plus one more, eleven. But... All right. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, Mark. All right. Uh, in um, you did not. You were not outstanding in your lessons, and there's a few times where there's a job for everybody. Yep. And basically, Noda Shoyo, um, who is your your uh, like the chief of your temple, I believe. Um, no, it's uh, uh, Master Matsumo. No, the no, no, to show you is the one who was in charge of your okay. your training uh, or overseeing it. Uh, he was the one who's basic. His comments to you is, "Your your uncle is a great member of the temple, and there's a job for everyone, <laughs> and you kind of get tasked with a lot of." Stack the barrels over there and carry them over there. It's fine. Uh, and you basically demonstrated an aptitude towards the more physical natures of brewing, uh, which is a very long and uh, arduous process. One day in your while you were working at the, the Gold Lantern Hall, um, members of a rival temple arrived. There's been a... So in PGO, there's a couple of different... Like, brewing is a big thing here, a big thing in the economy. Um, and there's lots of pride through these competitions. And there's a bit of a distinction between the beers and the spirits... You typically brew beers here. There is another clan, the, the uh, Half Moon, the Order of the Half Moon, which brew spirits, or they distill spirits explicitly. Yep. Uh, and a number of them end up in your temple, or in your brew house, making a bit more of a ruckus than one would normally expect um they're loud and they're happy uh, the primary most of that temple is venarin oh neat <laughs> monkey <laughs> <laughs> Does Lee so Lee's all about throwing things? <laughs> Hurler archetype of barbarian, far strike monk. Um, does he get into throwing competitions with the rivals, or he he certainly he certainly does. There is a so there is darts, which is a, a several a relatively popular game here. Yep, and then. With the, um, particularly with the Half Moon, um, with the Order of the Half Moon, darts has gone upscale. Basically, darts became javelins, became spears, became long spears, became caber toss with a point on the end, effectively. Yep. <laughs> uh, and there's this ever escalating feud between the groups that they try to settle through these competitions. Does he, know, does he know these people? Oh, he definitely knows them. Um, you know Grotag of the Half Moon? He is basically their their chief brewer and the head of their house. And then you've, he's got some generic monks with him. Also coming in um, to this uh, to this establishment is somebody who you do not know. Uh, there is a half work. That looks slightly out of place, although he definitely is wearing the um, uh, half moon um, uh, livery, rival, livery, the uh, livery, livery, <laughs> rivalry, <Sorry>. <laughs> livery. You know what I'm talking about? He's got yeah. their over. He's got their emblem. Yeah. He's, got, he's got their emblems and shit. <laughs> Uh, in the Crips and Bloods, he's he's rocking the Crips. <laughs> right. he, uh, Lee will go over and get two big ass tankards of like whatever common draft there is, and he'll come over. Master Grotag, 
Welcome. Welcome to Gold Lantern Hall. Mm-hmm. Here. For your newcomer. Why, thank you, Lehida. <laughs> he puts down the... Songro, don't worry, it's only beer. It will have no impact on... <laughs> it will have no punch. Uh, but it tastes good. <laughs> uh, you know that they, they focus on, like, uh, gin? Like, strong, clear alcohol yep. that you can light on fire? <laughs> You know that in certain, like... Better than drinking lantern oil. <laughs> and he, gives the other, he gives the other mug to the big, uh, uh, to the big Venaren. <laughs> it's what we give children. <laughs> uh, they, they're, they're moving towards a table. Okay. Uh, he, he, gives, uh, he gives a bow to that? Like... Of course you give it to the children. <laughs> that's what I just did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Lee, so know... so Lee Lee is smart and wise. His charisma is eight. So it, it part of it is he's big. He bumps into things. Um, he his voice is really stupidly low. It's he's hard to understand. And I imagine his wit gets gets him into like gets him into trouble maybe a well, little it's, bit. It's the it's the. Yeah, only a stupid guy would do it. It's like, yeah, you're stupid. <laughs> and I imagine he's loud. Like, <laughs> I imagine the seven foot ten, five hundred sixty pound, jolly guy. <laughs> it's just loud. <laughs> uh, one of the things that you do know—not that fighting happens frequently, but when there's yep. too much alcohol, it happens. Uh, the the half moon, uh, the order of the half moon, has a secret technique which involves basically swigging very strong alcohol putting a match in front of their face and spitting it in your face in like yep. a little flamey burst um it's just it's a thing that they 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 will do but you you've never you've always had a professional rivalry not like a a cutthroat bloodthirsty kind yeah, of uh, yeah he it's all he's he's laughing uh, when he says what he says uh, they, they they're taking it in good humor um he sees yeah. that they were being rambunctious, so he's yep. going to sit himself in between him and some of the other patrons so that they bump into him instead of others. Okay, uh, yeah, there's a... Um, uh, uh, before he leaves, are you are you a thrower? <laughs> Best there is. <laughs> you want to play a game of darts? That's the biggest thing you can, man- <laughs> you can manage. Wow. They don't want us to do throwing competitions inside the bar. I'd rather stay where the beer is. Dots works. Don't worry. They reinforced the wall last month. Too many of my dots were going through it. What's the wager? Um, <laughs> One month's worth of chores. Lee's secret stash, 65 platinum. He will pull out a platinum coin. Ooh. <laughs> That's... <laughs> yeah, well, like, monk, right? It's like you bought some weapons. <laughs> and Lee's build is like, hey, you dropped that. Uh, <laughs> he you dropped that. I'm flinging it at you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> uh, he's, he's like the, uh, the scrap He, he metal. puts a platinum coin down on the, on the, on the table. <laughs> Uh, I can make change if it's too much. No, I, I, I can do it. I can, I can cover it. <laughs> he just gets a big, friendly, probably overly, overly uh, 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 aggressive slap on the back. He goes over and starts setting up the dart, the bar, the dart for our game. Um, Lee, do us favor and honor. Uh, round of drinks for the Venarans. I uh, will send uh, Gnomekin, I believe is the wait staff. Yeah, Gnomekin is going to be sending some food and some more drinks over to the Venaran table. Um, as Nova, uh, Noda is, is basically giving them a round, an extra round as part of 
as he's now expecting Lee to wipe the floor with the mongrel. Yep. Lee will uh, drink his dex mutagen. No, it's a strength mutagen. Yeah, strength. He's a strength thrower. Okay, give me a second. Uh, He'll go over to fetch himself another beer, but the beer is going to be mixed with the mutagen, and he pounds it before the uh, before the show. Okay, uh, the mongrel is stretching in a weird way. Did the monkey men teach you how to look, move like that? Or is that an orcish thing? <laughs> <laughs> orcish thing. Oh. <laughs> well, no prehensile tail. He looks. <laughs> We ogres don't do that sort of thing. First to three? We bounce real good, though. (laughs) (laughs) Chris Bates. He's jolly. But a little, just a little, a little rougher on the edges. Two pieces on Hina. Uh, you, uh, one of the patrons in the in the back of the bar is is making starting to make bets on what the on the uh, the outcome here. Yep. Uh, there's another person. Ah, I think that. I think I know that. I think I know that half orc. Is that the one? Yeah, I think I know one. Okay. The uh, the first throw. Okay, uh, Lee is also going to go get a... I'll let you throw first. He's going to go get another beer. And inside this next beer goes a Bomber's Eye um, uh, extract. Okay. He'll, he'll pound that beer down and go back. All right, and they're non-masterwork darts, right? Uh, whatever. The they're just, just, just game darts? Okay. Yeah. Uh, 21 on the first attack. Okay. That's for... And we're going for accuracy here, not for yep. destroy. Yeah, it's not for who destroys the target more. It's the uh, the accuracy. Okay. So... Uh, Best of three or first of three? Or first of three. Perfect. He, yeah, he looks at your shot and he, 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 he allowed him to have this one. Okay, so Lee's regular tossing via strength. He's got plus one bab and a an 26 strength, which now is mutagen to 30 so that's plus 10 he will save his rage he's not angry yet uh we are within oh, he doesn't have point blank shot yet feats no he's really good at doing this quickly and with strength he's not trying to break the board so he's not going to call upon the shikigami spirits <laughs> because <laughs> They're actual darts, so he doesn't need to do that. Uh, all right, and then plus one from Bomber's Eye, which is a inherent bonus. Or insight, sorry. Bomber's Eye, one, plus 13. 26? Very good. <laughs> His mind's closer. Okay. Lihita will go up and check and point and make sure he sees it. Like eight Christmas. He, he waves you up. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, the mongrel uh, picks his nose before throwing the next one. Okay. Give spellcraft. Oh, he might be smart enough for this. Yes. 21. Okay. Um, 
he used some sort of power. It wasn't a spell. Like it was, but he used a power of some sort. Oh, we're using tricks, are we? <laughs> he hits AC 49. Wow. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Two can play at that game. <laughs> you will drink his true strike. <laughs> Okay, you'll need a natural 20 to beat him because the, he rolled a 20. Is what it says. Yeah, I, yeah. But I, it's, it's very, he has a very good shot. Um, I'm going to aim for his dart to destroy it so there's no proof of where he hit the dart. Okay. Good. 13, and he'll give it a little shout of rage for plus 2. <laughs> <laughs> plus 20 for the true strike. <laughs> uh, so, a dart does d3 damage, right? Uh, a dart does d2, I think. D2? Uh, and they're like medium people darts. Okay, he's going to enter his Shikigami style. Shikigami! Uh, they are, sorry, throwing darts are D4. Me, me, holy. Okay. Holy. Shigigami, resist the things I throw. Resist the things I toss. He's going to toss the dart sideways so that increases the damage dice of the dart. to, to, <laughs> to, to like a baseball. <laughs> to, to the next uh, higher um, uh, size, size category. And I'm using throw anything to not take a penalty with throwing something in a dumb way. He's throwing the dart backwards, basically. Okay, you flick around backwards. Like, what the fuck? What the hell is this guy jackass doing? And we'll do power attack on it. So I hit Roll a fifty. Through. So I hit a fifty-two. Okay, so you you straight up win. And then the damage uh, would be d six plus. Now this starts to get ridiculous. Uh, rage, power attack, minus one, plus two. And I don't have that power yet. Okay. So I did 16 damage to his dart with my dart. Okay. The, the dart has is there a uh, damaging objects. A dart is metal, so it's hardness ten. Yep. And then it's it'd be a light blade, or it'd be light blade or a projectile. So you destroy it, you destroy it. it would have two or five hit points. Um, where'd the dart go? On the table in the back. Boom! This is a big boom! That's a good throw! He's, he's up the, the fedora is up. He's looking at the reaction for. for he, hey. So <laughs> I, had, I had a couple little bonuses. He's the one breaking out true strikes. Is that earring true strike? You got true strike snots? <laughs> you eat your boogers for true strike. <laughs> <laughs> Big slap on the shoulder. Uh, Songrel sort of. Uh... I won't use true strike on my next one. I promise. You've. You've already bested me. Oh, I think that was a tie. My 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 dart didn't stay in the board. <laughs> probably went right through. Well, <laughs> it probably didn't stick in the board, right? Or is it stuck it, backwards? It's it, it just shattered. It okay. shattered. Okay, that, that was a draw. Okay, on the next one, he's saying, if you don't true strike, I won't true strike. Okay. He won't true strike. He's going to save his other true strike. Okay. <laughs> Just in I, case he I don't have it. any other true strikes left. I've got a shield. <laughs> I got tricked because he does have a true strike left. 
Like he he's, he's a, he's how he does it. <laughs> uh, Lee's laughing. He won't rage on this one. He'll just throw normally. Yep. Gets a twenty-five. <laughs> yeah, he was obviously rattled by the by the exchange. Uh, you know, if you did use your true strength, you would have won. Gets a slap on the back and goes and collects the <laughs> collects the darts. He's just like, uh... <laughs> okay. The the collection of shame occurs as he doesn't actually have enough money to pay the bet. <laughs> he has to go back to his the people who he's the temple he's joined <laughs> to collect. Some okay, gold. Lee will go get a celebratory beer. <laughs> goes in, goes into the table and just wait. <laughs> I knew you could do it, Lee. <laughs> Sorry, very, very, care, very careful. I think he's an alchemist too. Kind of like, kind of like we are. Hmm. Didn't know orcs could be alchemists. <laughs> Everyone knows the blessed ways, uh, St- uh, Steincaster. Orcs, orcs learn quickly, and they steal from the dwarves from time to time. Hmm. Oh, Don't point. worry. The uh, the mongrel has been around. We know who he is. He's called a mongrel. Oh. Uh, that's his name. <laughs> <laughs> he will go get a slightly better beer, two two mugs, and he'll just put them in front of himself. Or wait, okay, the so songrel, the mongrel. Yep. Uh, comes back. He's got a like a, an odd collection of coins. You had a platinum. Here, there's like three gold pieces and a stack of silver. There's some coppers. It's... Uh, he looks at the bowl. Good enough. <clears throat> he puts the bowl in front of him. Uh, better beer. A bit more of a kick. He invites the, the mongrel to sit down. The mong- mongrel sits. Uh, you are a mighty fine thrower. You are as well. <laughs> That's what I get for not using all the blessings. You held back. How did you throw it so accurately with a, you know... Shinigami! The, sh- the Shinigami. Tell me about the Shinigami. Okay, well, he, he will not tell him the secrets, but basically it's a style that allows you to throw uh, improvised weapons as if they're a one size category larger. Um, for each Shikigami style you have in the, the tree, that size increases by an additional one. <laughs> Up to three size categories larger. <laughs> I like throwing things. Not everything's meant for throwing. The Shikigami spirits, you please by going into the right style. He's going to drink his beer happily. Like <laughs> I threw it backwards, which is not how you're supposed to throw it. Which is how Shikigami threw the, the Shinigami threw it. No, the style did. You're simply pleasing the spirits that guide things through the air. I've always done it the old-fashioned way, I guess. Oh, no, I, I, do, I do the potion way, too. <laughs> and, well, you visualize throwing the thing through the thing you're aiming at. Nods. Through it. Through the thing. Do not throw Always through. through. Do not throw softly. I've always been taught to aim for the eye. Throw it. Shikigami. <laughs> <laughs> this is the strength thrower versus the dex thrower. As fast thrower. as you can. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, there's like shit for throwing in his hands. <laughs> He's got quick draw. Uh, there's some drunk Venarin in the, the the side of the bar. They've been mixing the, some of the some spirits they brought with them with the alcohol, and mm-hmm. there's a a ruckusy, shouty, generally wholesome good time. Okay, I imagine it involves some throwing of things at each other. 
Um, if there are like little rice dumplings or those there, little there, buns there was or whatever. A, there was a, a point where um, lychee nuts were served. Um, lychee nuts have like a pit on the inside. Okay. So it's like a it's like a grape with a seed, a big seed in the middle. Yep. Uh, you eat it and then you end up with this really shiny seed that happens to be the right side for chucking it. So okay, so Lee <laughs> Lee collected three or four of the nuts, gave two to uh, um, uh, Songrel. Says you're on my side. <laughs> They're throwing in pigs, one of the, the Venar in the face. They don't like this. <laughs> one point. One point for the half breeds. Okay, there's a a half breeds versus Venar in bleaching that fight. Uh, give me three d20 rolls sure I'm basically looking for ones because i think that's what you need to lose the throw. and i think <laughs> the, the game goes you try to do it in the increasingly embarrassing spots for the lychee nuts for it first one was off the back of their head next one is like trying to go into one of their drinks <laughs> like my my lychee <laughs> nut trick, goes trick shots. <laughs> and then like you know in into your clothing or get something. into your ear or something oh no 1420 and then one <laughs> <laughs> okay Okay, you win, you win, they win. Uh, okay, so you you do get the better of them in the in, in the lychee nut. Give me the that one natural one. Let's roll again. Let's see yeah. if there's something embarrassing happens. Yeah. Okay, no nobody like chokes on a lychee nut or you don't right. take somebody's eye out. I also have deflect arrows, so if any of those nuts came my way, they got deflected. <laughs> At one point, you got accused of cheating. <laughs> did Songrel throw nuts at his own monks, or did he? Did he give me a charisma check? Yeah, one d twenty minus one, four. He didn't help them. Okay. He and he didn't. He didn't say I'm not on Team Halfbreed. Like he wasn't. He was. <laughs> That's fine. He's, he's he, where his, he was. his ammo ended up getting used. Uh, the Nat Twenty was not looking behind behind the back into one of their drinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you you were able to find common... you know those stupid water bottle tricks. Apparently, Lido would be like one of those bros. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I flipped the water bottle. Oh, it landed! You know, and you hey. tried a hundred times and pretend like you did on your first. <clears throat> and then you make lots of money from social media for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> for being a jackass, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the new way is to actually, um, the apps actually have enough stuff built in that you could just, you could do all the special effects from your phone <laughs> to do, like, basic ones. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, this was like a rambunctious night and um you end up becoming friends with songrel the mongrel um the the, the rivalry ri the rivalry between your two uh temples and your your two like brew houses continues it is a friendly rivalry um there's nobody Nobody's trying to poison anybody. Nobody's trying to, you know, everybody's just trying to prove that their, their form of alcohol and their praise to, to the, the creation of life through alcohol is better. Right? It's good. You both have the, the you both have the holy yeast. Lee, sort of... Lee does not share the secret that he got from his uncle with anyone about the, the ambrosias, though. Yeah, the, like... the ambrosias were not taught in your classes. They're <clears throat> He doesn't go blabbing about that. That that he sees as a family secret. Um. Several years from this point have gone by. You are accomplished in sort of your tasks. Give me one more craft brewer to see if you ever got beyond the uh, barrel boy. <laughs> I, I mean, he's a pretty strong barrel boy. <laughs> he's a good barrel boy. Let's be let clear. <laughs> Plus seven, plus two, twenty-eight. You. It was a day with which. The. Um, the master Matsumoto, the beer con, was watching you doing your lessons, and you were meant. There was like there was there was a a, a sick call. 
and you had to basically go beyond your station and you did things as close to perfect <laughs> as you could. It was just a day where everything was clicking. Yep. And he simply nodded to you and he offered you a mug. Oh. Do we know what this is? Uh, it is a sign or symbol that you are a true brewer. This this mug means that you are actually allowed to brew in the name of your brewery. So, mug of the brewer of the um, what was the name of the monastery? Celestial Comet. Monks of the Celestial Comet. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Master. Good work. You've earned it. <laughs> your uncle will be very proud. <laughs> uh, you haven't seen your uncle in, like, three years. Like, he's... he's Zara, been... speaking of which, uh, have you seen him? Do we know when he's going to return? Hmm? He will return when it is time... His feet will carry him. We have heard no message that he is ill or in danger. Okay. Lee, I think, ex half expects his... This is near a seaside, right? Yep. Yeah, he spends some time um, looking for good skipping stones. Like on, yep. a be on a beach that has a view of the harbor or the bay or whatever, wherever the ships would come in. And he spends time out there sometimes when he does morning exercises or practices throwing. Like, he'll, he'll spend time on that rocky beach uh, finding good stones that please the Shikigami spirits. Not quite the perfect stone. It's like, I love the throwing object that's <laughs> got its imperfections. <laughs> the Shikigami likes imperfections. That's right. Yeah, but we also uh, he can he can throw normal weapons like it's not like he doesn't nope. always have to go shikigami. Um, uh, for large sized creatures, throwing rocks do d eight points of damage. So, not that he carries a lot of them, but he'll look to find enough for a little pile. I think. Yeah, uh, giant throwing. Yeah, hill giants do d eight. Oh, I'm just wondering what the weight of those things is I feel like a cannonball they're heavy um so yeah you don't want too too many of them uh cool yeah I, 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 a reasonable number of them is totally fine yep <clears throat> with your mastery here we are we do need someone to represent us in a new contract oh Now that you've mastered brewing, prove that you can competently showcase our techniques. I think it is time for, for you to put your... <laughs> He's gonna po he pokes you kind of in like the belly and the shoulder. Your other strengths are to good use. We have a potentially big contract with Shuto Chong. Where's that? Uh, where's that? It is the, the City of Stone. Hmm. Never heard of it. One of their finer establishments is looking to sample uh, well, some of the wares of Pijo as they are going more upscale. The... My, my batch will not be ready for some time. Will I be transporting other batches? Yes, you will be transporting the, transporting that which has already um, finished the process. Mm -hmm. As had the the blessed yeast has done its work. <sighs> he sighs a little bit. He's not good with animals, so he knows that he's going to end up having to pull the car, pull the cart. <laughs> this will be a joint venture 
You will be traveling with Songru. Oh. Are we going to be delivering their their vile gin? No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but pretty much. It's <laughs> they will be bringing gin. We will be bringing the beer. And if we can land this contract, then the entire city will be drunk by will be, will be rendered immobile by our libations. <laughs> you will be meeting with a dwarf in the Lucky Swan Performance House. A man by the name of Hattrath. What was his name? Sorry. Hattrath. Hattrath? Oh. He is a member of the uh, in the guild of brewers and distillers. We are ensuring that our product is worthy of the city of Chateau. Hmm. It does sound somewhat questionable. Are we in competition with the Half Moon? Our products are different. But... <laughs> is there a chance that we will not get contract when they will? Or vice versa? Of course. I wonder if there's a way to ensure that we both get it. Oh, that is my hope. I wouldn't want to. We have You've done such a good job fostering goodwill with the Venarins. I'd hate for it to go sideways. Uh, throw a few nuts and give them some beers. And... That's... <laughs> he shrugs. They like throwing things. How long do we have before we leave? I want to try something. I might get drunk doing it. You need to be there within the month. Travel will take three weeks. And we need to leave when? One week. Hmm. Do we have some of their vile gin here? Sure, we must keep some in the pantry. Uh, it's bottom shelf. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> Do you know how sometimes we put ingredients in the beer to make it taste different? I yes. wonder if there's a way, or a formula, or a... The, the spring beers are always laden with the most pleasant of spices, and the fall beers are always so warm and fulfilling as they're mixed with milks and honeys. Master, I have an idea. I do not know if I'm the right person to do it. We should take many of our different beers and mix them at various... with various parts of their different types of gin to make a concoction that is both our beer, mostly, and a bit of their gin. We will then showcase the best that we can make as um, an incentive for them to buy both the gin and the beer. And many people will get drunk. <laughs> and, then, and then everyone will be drunk. <laughs> I do not know if I'm the right one to do the mixing. Beer is hard enough on its own. And I have not worked behind the bar. But I have the idea. It will take many combinations and many nights of drinking to figure out which ones are best. <laughs> Perhaps we should invite the Venarids for to do this as they as they stand to benefit. This is, this is a good idea. This is a forward-thinking idea. Mm. Yes. This is an opportunity for everyone, and we all succeed together. In worst-case scenario, they refuse. We throw some things around, and we clean the place up afterwards. <laughs> if they refuse, they will not refuse us from buying their gin to do the mixing ourselves. But it seems unsporting to not involve them. Besides, there are hundreds of combinations when you take ten beers and 
six different gins. Bro, would that be 60? How many gins do you put in a beer? Hmm, and then ingredients. Fruits, spices, white of egg, milk. Mm. I'm starting to get thirsty. That's a bar. He has a beer with his master as he sketches out some preliminary ideas. Uh, I don't know what is that alchemy with. P. Craft alchemy? Yeah. Okay. He'll take 10? Because. Like, He's gonna get you. You're you're going like here's some ideas, and then you're gonna go, hey guy with a big craft check, you make this thing. Yeah. So without a lab, he gets twenty by taking ten. Okay. All right. You come up with some some decently good ideas um, uh, that you are uh, promoting. Uh, if you could, uh... I imagine if you have too much beer, or if you have too much gin, it just tastes like gin. And if you have too little gin? You may not taste it at all. So it is when you start to taste the taste of difference where the flavor will be. Don't really like the gin in the first place. If we put just enough in, it'll get you more drunk, but you don't have to taste the shit. Not true. Where, uh, is the city a stone full of dwarves or men? Uh, uh, this is Borath's. Yeah. <laughs> Borath's Steincaster. You dwarves, you've already killed your pallets. Well, oh. <laughs> uh, you see, you put something stronger in, and it'll bring it back to life. Just load it up in there. City of stone or city of men? He nods. So what uh, we should do then is... Although your contact is a dwarf. Okay. So the experiment... <laughs> <laughs> needs to be on both dwarves and men. Thankfully we have a restaurant to experiment with. Dwarves and men. <laughs> we could give people a free shot with their dinner. Before or after. To see if they like our new concoction. But we need to test it ourselves first. <laughs> <laughs> guys, 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 too much gin. <laughs> right. And we need to get the formulas right before we have to leave in a week. Hmm? I will prepare many blessings to alleviate the reward of hard nights drinking. <laughs> Lesser explanations for everybody. <laughs> Should you give an invite to the half moon? I will. I what? will. Do you wish to? We will invite them after we have a basic concoction to present. We basically say day two, day one. Like if it all tastes like the hog piss, then we don't need to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Lee will be as industrious as ever, as ever, gathering up the supplies and moving things around and going to the market. And okay, he's excited that the master it's... likes his Jin... idea. Jin and, and a is... quick and a quick Google search. There are fuck humans mix yep. things all the time. There are some cocktails that are actually beer and gin, which I'm yep. frightened of. But... <laughs> It's going to kick you in the ass. Is what it's well, yeah, to. for sure. Uh, in the mixing and in some of the experimentation, you you do learn that gin is a bit of a bastard compared to beer. It reacts the negatively. The bee's knees is Pilsner beer, gin, honey, and lemon. Apparently, that it's sounds am- is an amazing cocktail. Like uh, the beer's knees. Weird. Uh, the Elvis cocktail is gin, grapefruit juice, germane, fruit, and mint. That sounds good, too. Well, oh, that's just gin. I want that's just gin, gin, though. In beer. Oh, yeah. Pilsner. There we go. The, the bee's knees. Or the beer's knees. Hmm. Hop Collins recipe. 
dry and gin, you, simple syrup, lemon juice, and a good quantity of pale uh, lager or pale ale. So it seems to be around citrus, sweet. Ginger beer. Weird. Okay, so they exist. We're, we're, we're not inventing something that would not be possible. No, and, and the... Um, uh, for a long time, like, putting eggs in beer was really common. Yep. Through a bunch of history. Um, where you put the egg white or the egg yolk, or you cook the beer with egg and cream in it. And it's not enough cook enough to make it like you make it thick. Like meal beer was a thing, and then the I don't know if you've ever had buttered beer, the proper one. No, but I've yeah, it's I've heard of it before. I, I've made it. Um, it is a drink. Like it takes. <laughs> a, it is one of the drinks of all time. Uh, beer, simple syrup, butter, nutmeg, cloves, ginger, and a whole egg. Um, in a 12 ounce beer it is beer it is actually tastes nice but it's like I'm drinking 800 calories or whatever like it's <laughs> it sounds extremely heavy <laughs> it's very heavy but it's very warming and like when you warm it up it stays hot because there's so much oil in it it's like it's it keeps its heat uh, okay so in, in the mixing or in the, in the generation you end up with like finding out that gin reacts negatively with things that it, like beer doesn't right gin will curdle milk right right it will there's certain like if you put the ingredients <laughs> in the wrong order or too much or too fast you can actually have negative reactions that with beer like like your your brew your your the brew hall has special beers or meal beers or concoctions all the time right they they've got like working beers beers that are meant for people who who labor all day right and it's like, you don't bring them food, you just bring them a big barrel and everybody drinks. <laughs> then they can keep labor. Um, it, is, it is truly a, a, a holy masterpiece. Now, the, the, you've got your master brewers and a head bartender that are mixing up different versions and variations. Um, they effectively have a craft alchemy of plus 25, and then you can roll to aid. Yeah, he automatically hits. Okay. So 40, they create a, you, you, after some trial and error and a few upas, you, you have a concoction that includes some fresh herbs, something called a dragonberry and gin, as well as the, as one of your types of beers, it's actually a heavier beer than the Pilsner. Okay. And then Lee asks for them to write down the recipe, like it were like, so that he can read the recipe when he's making it. Because he can't replicate 40 if something goes wrong. Okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they, they, they write the recipe down for him. It, it, it's actually, not only is it written down, it is added into a codec of recipes for the guild. And it's under, like, a codec of, like, it's, it's not heresy, that's too strong of a word. But it gets, like... It's in the book for other, right? Like it's it's in the codex. Does of, Lee get his name other, put into it? <laughs> other beverages. <laughs> Does Lee get his name put beside it? What is it named? Uh, say the ingredients again. It was dragonberry, fresh herbs, honey, gin, and a dark beer. Uh, the bumble dragon beer. It's bumble dragon beer. And then in the list of the creators, you are like creator four in the list of the creators. It's fine. His name's in the book. <laughs> <laughs> it was his idea. You'll quickly forget that there are other people involved. You, so, you weren't the end and you weren't the first one. <laughs> recipes. Bumble. Dragon. Beer. So it's a dragon fruit 
Dragon Barry. Barry. Um, honey. Herb. Herbs. Gin, Gin and, and dark, dark beer. Lager. Don't try this at home. It might not be good. And what the <laughs> fuck's a dragon berry? <laughs> that's, why was, that's why I wanted to put that in there. Because yeah. dragon fruit is a thing. And it's like, yeah. no, no, no. It's not. <laughs> 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 fucking. <laughs> All the hate at the channel. It's email. disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do want to experiment with dragon fruit now, but <laughs> the dragon fruit's awesome. Dragon fruit's like alien fruits in most in most movies. Uh, okay, Lee's beside himself, happy with this outcome. Okay, the half moon, the order of the half moon, is comes on. It's actually the third day. By the time you got sort of like organized everything, it's your three days. It's your 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 seven days that you could get ready for the uh, the journey. Um, <laughs> I imagine we're all hungover. <laughs> uh, th there's there's liberal use of restorations on the first day of the fuck ups. On the second day, less restoration less restorations were being used as this was an earned hangover. This was the the the, the hangover of good work. <laughs> this is the <laughs> this is the type of hangover that you cure with more drink. Lee's got a big um, big stupid smile on his face when when the uh, when the Venarans arrive. I hear you have uh, some sort of offer to make. Um, don't worry, we will be. We'll be able to prepare enough gin in case there isn't enough beer to satisfy the people of Shuttle Chung. Please sit. We want you to try a new concoction of ours. <laughs> More baby water, yes. <laughs> they, they, they sit. Baby water. Bunch of drug monkey people <laughs> just just hammered doing martial arts, making more sauce. <laughs> oh, funny. What a weird little part of the world this is. <laughs> it's where the alcohol comes from. All right, Lee will... Uh, he's so excited that he helps with the trays. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. Thank you, sir. He brings five. Uh, there's a sixth on there. He looks at okay. the, he looks at the master and drugs. Boop. Okay, he one too many. <laughs> puts down another one, just in case someone else wants one. And he'll go sit and he's he's now watching. He's not throwing anything. He's okay. There's some there's some joking and there's smelling and there's. You can see them sort of jostling back and forth as they're like, you know, who's going to try it first? Um, the uh, Grotag of the Half Moon is the first one to try it. He, he gives it a smell. He's, he's treating it like a liqueur more than a beer. He's like swirling it. He's like swirling it and sniffing it and finally takes a sip. Fruity note. Good nose. A mint or something. Basil. Mm. Nice burn. Quickly mellowed out by the creaminess. Um, the the Venarin. He's got a very refined palate. Like he's able. He's basically dissecting mm -hmm. the drink in a very professional way. Where normally they're more here cutting loose and being jovial <laughs> being slightly standoffish and jovial in, in your house uh he's he, you can see him being much more professional and a lot of the goofing around has really toned down uh once he starts taking the drink seriously it's pretty good this is a pretty fine vintage i believe you're using the gold reserve gin in here he's given an eye when, they, when he's giving the hmm. <laughs> the 
What is your machination? He, he looks at the master. We propose a joint venture. Something to really sell Pijo to the people of Churchill uh, Chung. This contract will be good for both of our temples. And a drink like this can help ensure that contracts are extended to both parties. Your beverage is primarily beer, <laughs> as I notice. Uh, you know that gin is also more expensive per... Mm-hmm. It's like... The the drink itself is about 50-50 in terms of alcohol content for both sources. And it's like a it's near wash on sort of the price. It would be a, a near equal profit share if it was just straight up on who sold the most barrels. We would make about equal profit. If you do the math. There's well one of the bedars at the back is but there's more beer in there. <laughs> It would cost uh, profit, not not volume. They, they they're all brewers, so they all take their measurements seriously. And we're talking about like measures and amounts; those are all things that you don't screw around with. <laughs> uh, there are two ways we could go about this: we could make this stuff here and then ship it, or we can mix it at the final location. Do you know how well it keeps? Some of the fruit essences don't last as long as one would like. You could mix the parts that keep here and then teach them how to make the rest there. I believe this would be good for both of our temples. Uh, you've got uh, the, uh, the beer con. It is good for everyone. It is good for the town. It is good for the local economies. Even the orchards will get more more um, business. Oh, and those that tend the apiaries. Exactly. Precisely. It is good for everyone. Give me a d20 roll, basically, to describe your team's uh, sort of Diplomacy. Nine. Nine? <clears throat> it is when the bumble the bumble dragon beer war started. <laughs> we will take your gin. No, we will take, we'll take your, your beer. beer. Uh, we will sort out the details later. But we approve of this new drink. He's got a big dopey smile on his face, looking at his master, looking at Looking at uh, living iron. Um, Bumble Dragon Beer. This is a little bit of a they were happy with the name until beer was at the end, but then Bumble, there's a B and there's a B. Uh, there's already a thing called ginger beer. Gin beer might be confusing, but we could call it the Bumble Dragon Gin Beer. Bumble Dragon Beer we Gin. Will, we will figure out. We can figure out a name. <laughs> there's, they're not necessarily sold in the name. First, we'll see if the if those aristocratic city folk will drink it. It's very tasty. If not, we can. It's it's definitely going on our menu. <laughs> you really can't stop. The beer con is... There ain't nothing you can do. It's already on the menu. <laughs> He's pointing at the wall and it's been like a freshly painted placard. <laughs> Are the other monkey folk drinking it? 
Although they're, they're drinking it, they're they're enjoying it. They're they're basically they're drinking it. They're looking happy that they're like going back to stern faces. Like okay. Woo! <laughs> they're going. <laughs> Who finishes their cup first? The monkey that's right behind Grotang.